In this movie, I'm going to look at some creative uses of custom alpha textures in Shadowbox. I've imported some custom alphas that I created in Adobe Photoshop. These are just grayscale images that uh, I've imported into the uh, alpha flyout library. And I'm using the masking pen with a rectangular uh, stroke type to draw these out on the front of Shadowbox. You see it come up with a very nice, clean looking uh, hard surface object. Now what's fun is I can switch over to a side view and choose another custom alpha. In the stroke type library I'm turning on the square and center options so that when I use the rectangular stroke type the alpha is perfectly square. It comes from the center of where I drag with my brush. So the result is a combination of the two shapes from the front view and the side view. And I can clean this object up a little bit uh, by expanding the deformations palette and um, increasing the relax slider and also the polish slider just to even out the surface. And at this point I can take my sculpting brushes and turn this into whatever I want. And the interesting thing about using this technique is I'm coming up with shapes that I probably would not have thought of using other means in ZBrush. And that's where the real fun of Shadowbox is. I'm going to clear this one out and uh, experiment with a little bit with using radial symmetry. So I'm going to choose another alpha here and go to the transform palette and turn on activate symmetry and also activate radial symmetry and I'm setting this slider down to three so this will create three instances of my alpha and this is the shape that I come up with when I drag on the front of a shadow box. Now when you create uh, meshes with shadow box they are automatically organized into polygroups if you have the polygroup button on and this can be very convenient because now I can take advantage of group loops which creates edge loops around the border of each of the polygroups and I can also toggle the visibility of each polygroup by control shift clicking on the polygroup surface. And at this point I'm just experimenting using the inflate slider to puff out or shrink in uh, the different polygroups and this creates a nice sort of hard edge along the contours of the surface. So this is the, uh, the type of surface that I come up with. And, um, one other thing I'd like to try is uh, experiment by filling the uh, different parts of the surface with different colors. So I'm basically just hiding the rest of the surface, choosing a color, and using the fill object uh, option in the color palette to fill each part of the surface with a different color. And this is the result I get, which uh, you know is kind of a starting place for inspiration for interesting objects.